anything that we can do to help people overcome the fear that's keeping them from getting in the game. Cause like, yeah. you know, my thing is just like, it's almost doesn't matter what you buy, just buy something like you yeah. need to get into real estate. And so we see like first time home buyers who would love to buy, but they're so scared. The more years that you rent, the the missed opportunity of building wealth long-term is there, oh, for you sure. know, it's just a pity. What's up guys. we got a special treat for you today. We've got Miss Sarah Evers here and she is an amazing agent. Uh, with Moving Music City. She's got a team here. She's been an agent in Nashville for almost 19 years and has built a team. We're going to talk all about what it means to succeed in this market right now if you're a buyer or seller or even an agent out there. So thanks for tuning in. Sarah, good to see you. How's it going? Good to, good see, good to see you. you. Yeah. Good. I've always heard me. your name and here you are, you know, and so, yep. And then, so, and then even you've got like a team. So tell me about your teammates and how you got started and all that sort of thing. Oh yeah. Okay. So, um, I got started. I moved here from Chicago. I was going to school in Chicago and moved here ni almost 19 years ago. And, um, I had a, I bought my first condo in Chicago in Logan square neighborhood, if anyone knows Chicago. Um, and I had a great agent and I was 22 at the time, I think. Um, and I, I owned that condo for a year and then sold it and moved here and made about, I think $50,000 or something. And so as a 22 year old, it was like blew my mind, just yeah. the possibility in real estate. And it made me excited about real estate. Um, and so I got my license and I worked as a licensed assistant for about a year with the sold sisters, shout out to them. I think they're still around. Um, and then I went to village real estate as a solo agent on my own after that. And I was there for about 13 years. Um, and I'll tell you all about the, the burnout and why I started a team, but I started a team about 10 years ago and we're at Compass. I'm a joined Compass as a founding agent in 2018 when we opened here and my team is Moving Music City. There's five of us, all women, um, four agents and Amber, who's also an agent, but does all of our director of ops and marketing as well. Awesome. And Meg Wilmer, I know a lot of, yes. a lot of you out there know Meg. And so, <laughs> and so, um, you're, you're sort of doing, you got a lot going on right now, building a home mm -hmm. sort of uh, in a community that's a really cool community that a lot of people out there don't necessarily know yeah. about that are, but it's Fairview. Yeah. And so you get, the, tell us about Fairview. I mean, it's amazing. It's in Williamson County, which is desirable mm -hmm. uh, and probably a little bit of a reason why you live there. But yeah. um, tell us about that and what's, what, how that's been going. Yeah. Fairview is kind of like a little hidden secret. Um I've been selling real estate here for almost 19 years and I've only sold a handful of houses in Fairview. Um, but my husband and I, we live in Bellevue currently and our kids go to daycare uh, kind of halfway between Bellevue and Fairview. And so we started exploring out there. I have a builder I've worked with a couple times that I loved and I just thought to reach out to him uh, to see if he had anything. And he had some lots available right on Highway 100. So oh, wow. if you know Loveless Cafe, if you just keep driving um, south, from there, it's just down that road. Um, and we, we'd we been looking for a house for about a year and a half. I'm like the typical difficult buyer and just couldn't find anything that I wanted. And um, at Williamson County, like you said, very desirable, very hard to find stuff and Fairview's um, the more affordable part of Williamson mm -hmm. County. And so, yeah, we're building on two and a half acres. We're about a year in at this point, I think. And it's, it's quite a process. It's not for the faint of heart, I will say, but it's going to be awesome when it's done, whenever that is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people um, wonder about that, about building a home and, hey, am I going to be able to uh, stomach it or whatever? But mm -hmm. it's interesting that you say about Fairview because it is true. You know, when I think of Fairview, I grew up here in, in Middle Tennessee. I grew up in Harrisonville and I live in Franklin now. But, man, Fairview just has so much to offer in terms of just affordability. Mm -hmm. And there's just, I mean, there's luxury homes there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got homes that people can move into their first time buyers, right? Oh, for sure. It's really cool. It's very affordable. Um, and it's like, it's such a rural small town vibe, yeah. which is cool. Like I've done the big city thing. I lived in Chicago. I was very urban at one point. And now that I'm in my forties, I kind of just want a little slower pace of life. I just want to be outside the city a little. And it's just, it's funny how friendly everyone there is. Like one thing, you know, we went to the local Walmart there um, recently just to get out of the house. And people were chatting us up everywhere. Everyone was so nice. And I feel like not that they're not nice in other it's parts. It's a Tennessee of, thing, though. Yeah, I, it do, is. I do think that it is. We, get, yeah. we do get that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. sure. So tell me what's going on with the business right now. I, you know, it's a, we're, in, we're right now as we film this, we're, um, I guess, close to the end of the first quarter. Is that, no, we're mm -hmm. in the first mm -hmm. quarter. So what are you seeing? What's going on out there? Uh, Nashville still very desirable place to live. I mean, you've got 
great. When I say Nashville, I'm obviously talking about the surrounding counties mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. But what are you seeing out there that's going on right now? I mean, it's been, I mean, the last couple of years have been, you know, up and down mm-hmm. for the whole real estate market, but it seems like people are still pouring in to Nashville. I mean, all yeah. you have to do is look at the skyline and the cranes and so yeah. forth, yeah. which, you know, yeah, right. Yeah. So it's crazy. What are you seeing in terms of buyers and sellers right now, what they're doing to succeed in the market? It's a weird market. Like that's the best word I can kind of have for it. It's unpredictable. Probably good, um, good word. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. <laughs> right. Um, it's, it's kind of unpredictable. So you have some listings that sell immediately, multiple offers, crazy bidding wars again. And then you have some that sit no showings for three weeks to a month for no reason. Like it's really a lot of that. Realtors are kind of scratching their heads of why. Even though it's doesn't. price right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We see, and it depends on the area and the price point and like the luxury price points, obviously different than the first time home buyer price point, but yeah, it's kind of all over the place. So it's just really as agents, like zeroing in on the specific area that you're looking at Mm -hmm. and really preparing your clients for what to expect, especially I think on the selling side, you know, a lot of sellers have expectations based on 2021 and 2020, first part of 22, when things were very different. And so to educate them on what the market is doing now, and it's really like, I tell people the comps are changing weekly. So, yeah. you know, you have to like, it's a game time decision where you're going to price something and you look at what else is out there, what's sitting, what's coming off the market and what the inventory is and what your competition is going to be. Yeah. Um, and it's so important to just be like hyper, hyper aware of every little geographical area to right, advise your right, clients well. Right. I mean, it, it's so interesting right now with, like you say, I mean, you've got some houses that are just multiple offers, mm-hmm. <laughs> but the same, because at one time, it was that across the board. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, it was yeah. just oh, yeah. houses, you know, cars lined up outside the house mm-hmm. and um, people writing letters, yeah. even though I think that's even frowned upon now about the whole letter. Love you know, letters. Yeah, the love letter. Yeah. <laughs> However, um, that's what, that was just the norm. But mm-hmm. um, I think the rates, you know, people in the election year, uh, to me, that's what it seems like. People are, mm-hmm. uh, it feels like a lot of activities picked up, I know for me and my team, a lot more leads, mm-hmm. but it's almost like the leads um, are just not like what they were at one point. Mm-hmm. So like, it's almost like you yeah. have to have more leads yes. to maybe close. Yes. And so yeah. I don't know what that is, but it's almost yeah. like the quality meaning, um, and I don't know what it is. It's not like they have bad credit. It's it's just almost like they're, some of them are just tentative. It's they don't tentative. Kind of, and we're seeing a lot of contracts flowing through. There's not a lot of just, hey, this is what yeah. I want to do. Yeah. I mean, so it's almost like when you get that person, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, oh, wow, this feels, Different. I remember this. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be the norm and now mm-hmm. it's the exception. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've had, I was thinking of um, poor Casey on my team. She's had five contracts fall through this year oh, and, and several have gone back under contract. And But it's just, we're seeing that. I keep hearing other agents say that too, that you'll have a lot of people go under contract and then back out. It's that tentative. It's that unsure. People are, are nervous or like looking at interest rates and different things mm-hmm. and hearing advice. Something I tell clients all the time, like don't listen to the advice of right. well-meaning family and friends who live out of state and don't know our market and are telling you, don't do that. Don't do that. Um, so you have a lot of that. I think that's, I've even seen some, like, you know, something that on a home inspection, but first of all, you know, we're back to home inspections. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is a good thing mm-hmm. we've it always is. said. However, you, you know, you get these home inspections and maybe it's something that easily to overcome. Yeah. And all of a sudden now pff, they're backing out yes. and it's yes. probably something else. Like they just weren't quite, it's almost fear. like looking for it. Yeah. Fear or something. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting. I think that right now we talk a lot about, and I don't know, I'd love to hear your perspective on this, but you know, really educating. I do a lot of education on my social media platforms and I think it's important for people just to realize, especially not only just the buyers, but the sellers, that what the buyers seem to be motivated by is is really the payment. Mm-hmm. It's really yep. the rate is one thing, but if they can get the payment lower and the way to do that is just you got to get creative. Like the, we weren't doing two one buy downs. We didn't do those mm-hmm. for a decade. Yeah. So here all of a sudden now there's like a you know two one or one zero buy down. And if mm-hmm. the seller can sort of. If you can even maybe implement that, implement that into the MLS mm-hmm. where you're offering that yep. and they can get a little bit more for the house closer to the price point they want, but instead give a concession because yeah. that's where really the bang for the buck because it's just not a lot of bit, the big difference for someone to get $20,000 off their home. It's yeah, it's no. 140 bucks on their payment. Right. But if they get that same 20000 as a credit, yeah. now all of a sudden 
their payment could be seven, five, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars less, mm -hmm. depending on the product that they do, and it's the same to the seller. So I think some yeah. people, the, the message just doesn't seem to be really universal out there that that's mm -hmm. really kind of the way to do it. Because mm -hmm. I get asked a lot about, you know trying to help market a property and, you know, sellers are wanting what, what they need to do. Hey, I don't want to take my, a whole lot less for the house. What's the best thing to do? Mm -hmm. And it's, that's really the thing. I don't, yeah. what are your thoughts? Oh, for sure. That's huge. I mean, I agree with you. The, the fear over the payment is what's stopping a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, even if they can afford it, it's a psychological thing. They have mm -hmm. some number in their mind of like, oh, I can't, I don't want a payment that high. And I, I know that because I'm building right now and we're facing mm -hmm. that as well, of not knowing what rates are going to be in August or whenever we close. Um, but yeah, it really is like anything that we can do to help people overcome the fear that's keeping them from getting in the game. Because like, yeah. you know, my thing is just like, it's almost doesn't matter what you buy, just buy something. Like you yeah. need to get into real estate. And so we see like first time home buyers who would love to buy, but they're so scared. Mm -hmm. And so like anything we can do to get them into something, because the the more years that you rent, the the missed opportunity of building wealth long term is there. Oh, for you sure. know, it's just a pity. For sure. I mean, and we we do this um little analysis about the rent to own analysis that we do uh, and share with agents. And it's really for first time buyers, particularly because it's true. I mean, when you look at three years out, five years out and what they've mm -hmm. spent on rent versus what the appreciation would be. Yep. And I think hopefully by now people are, the message is getting out to the masses that there's not likely to be any sort of a crash because of the lack of inventory. Yeah. And so we just yeah. have such a small amount of inventory that, you know, normally in a normal market when rates triple, yeah. Yeah. then the, the you know, then there's this huge pullback and, and prices come down. Now it's not to say that prices haven't come down more so in other places than, than you yeah. know, San Diego, Seattle, mm -hmm. whatever, but it's because they were appreciating 30, 40% a clip, you know, sure. <laughs> a year. Yeah. But now I just think, you know, if you can, think about and, and educate people and show and just illustrate how here's where you're at. Here's what you're paying in rent. You know, what's it going to look like in three years? Mm -hmm. And here's the appreciation and the loss of that, you know, the perceived right. loss of like 30, 40, $50,000. Yeah. I think that's the key, right? Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. And if we've heard, I can't tell you how many people we've heard say like, I expect there's going to be a crash or the bubble's going to burst or all these things that like, and again, that advice might pertain to other markets. Like mm -hmm. you're talking about California markets, other places, but here in Nashville, like I, I firmly believe that's mm -hmm. not the case and isn't going to be. And I'm as someone who's lived through the actual crash, you know, yeah. and, and worked in real estate through that. Um, I don't think that's the case. And so it's just hard when people have that in their mind and you try to convince them otherwise, mm -hmm. and you know, they don't always believe you, but I don't think we're looking at any sort of crash here. Right. You know? I think what it is, if you tell me what you think, Sarah, but it's really just because this is what I get a lot in my DMs, but it's really just they can't believe. And I, I, I'm, I'm with him. I empathize. It's like that the houses are just continuing. Like the house that was 350 is now 500. Yeah. And so you're telling me that that's going to continue over, like it's going to yeah. increase again. But I just had um, a, an agent on here, Greg Musgrave, on the show, and who does lots of land in Leapers Fork. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 20 years ago, 2003. You know, property values were sixty. It was sixty five hundred dollars an acre, wow. and he said in, in Leapers Fork. Wow. So just to quantify that, I mean, he, you know, he said at that time he was like, I was sure that there was gold or oil somewhere on that land that I was paying for for this ridiculous price. Mm -hmm. And fast forward, it's over. It's a hundred thousand dollars an acre. Mm -hmm. Twenty years mm -hmm. later, yep. so that's just kind of one one segment, but. I think it's just hard, especially for the younger folks and people that weren't in the market until just a couple of few years ago yeah. to see or to understand that, you know, it's really supply and demand and mm -hmm. we're just builders are, are scrambling to keep up. And yeah. it's just, it's, it's going to be very, very difficult uh, for them to, to really sort of even it up. Yeah. And so I think real estate really, when you have Dave Ramsey saying the best time to buy a house is now or yeah. in the next five years, yeah. who's the most conservative person exactly. in the world out there then you have to sort of pause. Yeah, right? you do. And I, I mean, I think it, it's a, it's, and I empathize too, because I, I understand it's hard to wrap your brain around what prices, what prices are, what interest rates are. But if you, the, the cost of waiting and not buying mm -hmm. is greater than the cost of saying, okay, I'm, I'm, I get a six and a half rate and it's, I wish it was four or I wish mm -hmm. it was three and a half, you know, what I have on my current home. But, you know, it's like, the, that doesn't mean that it makes sense to wait, you know? And so right. it's hard for people to wrap their brains around and I get it. Right. Yeah. I think just, 
you know, it's almost like, you know, we have to kind of look at what the rent is versus what the payment w- would be yeah. and and look at what the benefits are. Yeah. No one should ever stretch themselves beyond their means. I mean, that no. is not what we're saying. I mean, we there's definitely, that. you don't want that. No. Uh, you should never do that. And here's the thing. Sometimes it's just better to rent. Yeah. I mean, there's, yes. a, there's a season in life for everything and maybe, um, you know, wait till income goes up or some debts are paid off, that sort of thing. But, yeah. you know, as we... Move into, I almost want to segue to the luxury market because, I mean, I know you service that market as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what are you seeing differently for, you know, the million and plus, we'll say million mm-hmm. and plus here, you know, you get a luxury home for a million plus here, yeah. whereas that may not be that way in uh, L.A. County or Orange County. Yeah. But, yeah, sure. but, uh, but you know, what are you seeing differently in, in the reactions to the market mm-hmm. in that market? Yeah, our inventory, talking about lack of inventory, I don't feel like that totally applies to the luxury market mm-hmm. here. We have kind of a surplus of inventory mm-hmm. in a lot of areas in that million and up, two, three million and up range. Um, so it's- What and, do you attribute that to? What do you think? I mean, I think that a lot of things, I mean, I think interest rates, you know, don't affect buyers necessarily at that price point as much, but the overall economy and the overall- sentiment does still affect Mm -hmm. that segment of the market. So I think um, when rates drop, I think that will change, I'm sure, if -hmm. if rates drop. Um, But I think like to, speaking to as a realtor, you know, having a really, really strong marketing plan and getting really creative. One of the reasons I joined Compass is the national network to be able to network with and form relationship with agents all over the country who are doing really creative marketing things and who have clients who would be buying these $5 million properties Mm -hmm. here. Um, And so to, you know, gone are the days of just sticking a property on MLS and taking some pictures and hoping it's going to sell. Like that is not it's the case anymore. Yeah. You, it's, there's a lot of work involved now, mm-hmm. right? I mm-hmm. mean, yeah. and I think that's the reason why, I mean, a lot of people exited. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not yeah. as easy. It's not just this easy job. Um, I mean, you have to work like a job. Yeah. You yeah. Know, right. You have I mean, to be which really, is what you really, the successful people have always done. Yeah. Uh, but the market was flooded also in the mortgage business. I mean, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. half of have left in both. You had $160,000, um, 160,000 lenders. Now down to eighty thousand. Wow! You know, clipped just like that. So I mean, yeah. a big, big thing. And then mm-hmm. a lot of them that are left are uh, not closing that many loans. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's very interesting. And I know agents; it's been similar numbers. But mm-hmm. uh, I think education is just so key right now. I mean, to really educate because, and, and we'll touch on this because I think this the the messages that you get in the media it's all about just getting the views. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, you know, uh, there was a, a an article that came out the other day. It was talking about. You know, this is, again, I hate to keep bringing up California, but it could be anywhere they're talking about. But just really, just really harping on the fact of how expensive homes were and how so many people can't afford it. And mm-hmm. while that's true, I think there the message, if you keep looking at the same sites over and over, there's really never a time that they will say it is good to buy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. you know, it's always negative, negative, negative. Right. And so I think, unfortunately, some people just get caught in that in that sort of silo and it's just, they never get out of that. And they, so they never buy. And so out of fear. And so again, we're talking about a segment of people that really could afford, Mm -hmm. but they're, they're listening to some messages that I would say Mm -hmm. are not accurate messages. And then you have to realize guys that the media is there to get your eyes. You know, there's, I like to use uh, Diana Olick on CNBC and uh, a good friend of mine, Barry Habib, who owns, um, MBS Highway. Uh, I forget the name of his new company, but the uh, uh, Segway too. But I mean, she has wrongly predicted a housing crash like it's nine times, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. it's like, okay, you can't keep doing that over and over and over over eleven years and keep saying it's going to crash mm-hmm. because you know people are watching. You know, yeah, and it's just yeah. wild. Well, yeah, I mean, I think and real estate's so hyper local that when people listen right. to messaging from a national source, like like I was saying with the well-meaning relatives too, that somebody a relative in ten states away is telling you, well, don't mm. do that or don't pay that or don't offer that, and they don't understand our market. Like you really need to lean on your realtor and your mortgage, you know, your real estate team that's local for their expertise and their advice rather than all these outside voices coming in. I right. think those aren't always helpful. Right. Oh, it's it's so crazy. So, well, what do you see happening? What are your, you have any project uh, predictions as we move through this year? You know, we're going to move into springtime. I, I think activity is picking up. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But it's still weird. It's weird. I know we thought it was going to be less weird than it is, and it's still a little yeah. weird. Well, I think that's been the story for the last year. Is <laughs> yeah, like right. No one has expected all the weirdness. But yeah, yeah. I think everyone's kind of waiting for things to sort of normalize. And I yeah. do think that, man, I hate to say it, but I do think, you know, 6% rates are probably here to stay through the year. Sure. Um, you know, when I think a lot of people were predicting and, and, and for good reason, but you know, even to be down in the fours by the end of last year and that mm. just didn't happen. And there's just, there was a lot of reasons for that. Um, you had bank failures and, um, you know, there was a lot of things that the market just had to sop up. So, uh, now I think as hopefully, I think if we get into the fives, I mean, mm. who is it? Barbara Corcoran. She always says, mm-hmm. you know, if we get into the fives, it's going to be pandemonium again. Yeah. And so the yeah. thing is, what people need to realize, though, Sarah, is that you can get into the fives if you get the seller to do a two one buy down. Sure. Yeah. And so the idea just is that just utilize your agent, your your lending team and mm-hmm. talk to them about buy downs mm-hmm. and work towards that rather than a seller or, or and rather than a, a, a reduction, a price reduction, because yeah. it just has such a bigger impact. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a different conversation that we have now. I mean, before yeah. it was. Just we weren't really talking about these products, and really, arms have made a comeback. I was you know, just adjust, going to ask adjustable you rate if you mortgages do a lot have of made arms. a little, bit, mm-hmm. not a lot, and never yeah. have historically uh, because yeah. there wasn't really a need. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I will say, you know, I, you know, I, I here my market has always been Tennessee, but a lot of you know more upwardly mobile clients that are coming from out of state. That's where I see they have they're more risk tolerant, mm-hmm. and they'll mm-hmm. and they'll even bring it up. Yep. So hey, I'm that's thinking about an arm. What's uh, Yep. You know, my clients and so do they arms know or that New Yorkers, they, they, right? New Yorkers, yeah. you know, from Chicago, mm-hmm. from California, they, they seem to be more risk um, tolerant and mm-hmm. just are open to to do yeah. that. You know, it's interesting, like looking back, his you know, in my history in the industry and seeing, like, I actually think this is a fairly level market. It's just it's so different from what we were used to. Mm-hmm. I mean, starting in like 2013 after the recession, our market was just up 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 up. It was mm-hmm. really really strong and and it was very much a seller's market for the better part of a decade. Right. And so people just got used to that thinking that's normal. And now we're in a in a market where it's, you know, some areas sellers have the advantage, some areas buyers have the advantage. It's kind of all over the place and that's not that abnormal. I mean the rates are higher than they were, but I just see it as more of a normal market and that's different for a lot of people who've been in the business for a short time or who have not mm-hmm. bought before or not sold before. So it's just, to me, it's not, you know, it's, it's weird in that we don't know what to expect because our market was so crazy. And then it was, you know, for about, mm-hmm. I don't know, about a year there, it was, it was pretty rough. And now it's kind of leveling off. I see it, you know, it's like normalizing a little bit, right. you know, but it doesn't mean it's, it's crazy again. Well, tell me, um, where your team, and I don't want to leave anyone out. So we mentioned Meg Wilmer, Casey yeah. Weaver, but Hannah Chatfield, uh, where do you guys service? Tell everybody kind of where you guys service because you've got yeah. lots of people coming in. They're transferring from out of state or yeah. maybe just even the crew of people that are, that are moving to yeah. and fro in, in the Middle Tennessee area. Yeah, we're kind of all over. Um, we have a listing in Clarksville right now. We have, you know, Fairview. We've got Hendersonville. We do Lewisburg. I mean, we're pretty much within an hour and 15 minutes of Nashville. So we mm-hmm. kind of do. And that's the beauty of having a team is it's not just one person trying to drive all over the state. We've got mm-hmm. five of us. We actually, Amber Ponceroli, um, is also an agent on our team. And sometimes she's our our admin and marketing. But um, she pops in and shows houses sometimes too, if need be. And we're all over. So um, we can kind of service everything. I mean, our office is in Green Hills and we do a lot of Davidson and Williamson, Wilson, you know, kind of the Rutherford, mm-hmm. um, all the all the big counties. Well, last question here. So I'd love to know kind of what you guys do uh, as a team or as a leader, you know, buying a house is one of the most stressful times, mm-hmm. you know. And so sure. and on top of that, realtors are stressed, you know, a lot of them are mm-hmm. anyway. And mm-hmm. so there's a lot of stress going on in the marketplace. And so. Mm-hmm. How are you managing that, you know, personally along with your team and then conveying that to these buyers and sellers? Yeah. It's funny being an agent, you and and as a lender too, I'm sure you feel this way, you kind of become an amateur therapist and marriage counselor and financial advisor and all these things, um, which is really cool. It's an honor to work with people in these big momentous Mm -hmm. times in their lives. And so we take that very seriously, taking care of people and guiding them and trying to keep our stress levels low and out of the picture, like talking about work-life balance and, and part of having a team is to maintain that. So we're all 
we've all got it together and we're not stressing our clients out or taking on their stress, but we're advising them well. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's really is my favorite part of the business is just mm -hmm. guiding people through these very yeah, tough things yeah. and allowing them to put their stress on me. Like, let me take that on for you. We've got you. That's what we're here for, to advise you, to coach you, to, you know, help you to just be there for you no matter what's going on in the transaction. And right, I really right. love that. Well, cool. How can people reach out to you? I mean, they want to work with you and your team. Yeah, How do they that. reach out? How do they connect with you? Movingmusiccity.com. Um, we're on there. We're on Instagram, Moving Music City Team. I'm Realtor Sarah with without an H on no Instagram. H. No H. Um, but yeah, you can reach out to us. We'd love to chat if anybody needs advice or if you're looking for an agent in another market. I've got a huge network of agents um, in pretty much every market in the country. So I can yeah. recommend somebody really great. Yeah. And you mentioned actually um, your friend Michelle... Uh, Bailey, mm -hmm. yeah, yep. down on 30 30A. I worked the 30A market as well, and then yeah. you know um, some others down there mm -hmm. as well. Yep. So, all right, sure. guys, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.